This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Today we have a walk-in freezer door that has got ice buildup and the door is not shutting. All around the door we've got frost all around it. And you notice that we have frost all around the door frame. So, um, we're gonna diagnose, I'm assuming a bad door heater. Trust me from experience that whenever you're working on a walk-in freezer door, you wanna identify where the panic alarms are and make sure you don't beat anything on the other side of that wall. I have set up one too many panic alarms and it's not a fun thing. The police usually come code blue, they're not happy about it. Code blue means no lights, no sirens, they just get their butts here. I'm not kidding with you, I've had them come with helicopters and then other times I've had them send just one officer. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and let the manager know that they need to call the alarm company and put that on test just because we don't wanna accidentally set it off. Audio sync. Okay, we've got the thermal image. You can obviously see that inside the freezer is very cold because that's the dark blue. Around the door is warm, but it's not hot. And that's because the door heater's bad. Um, if the door heater was working properly, we would have red right here where it's blue. You see how it's blue? I know it's kind of hard to tell, but that's because I just touched. You see, you can see my fingerprint <clears throat> left on it. So um, the door heater is not working right now. We're gonna go ahead and get an amp clamp on there too, just to verify. You can see how it's kind of yellowish, bluish around the door frame, but it's red on the wall. So that door heater behind that, where the yellow is should be red all right i had the manager put the alarm on test for eight hours um, that way we have plenty of time and if we accidentally set it off they won't come we'll just make sure we call them if we get done earlier which we will be so i'm testing the door heater wiring it's it goes in here behind this heater track comes in here and we've got no current draw across it so we're going to go ahead and check voltage to make sure that it's a voltage is being applied should have 115 volts going to it all right, so we have 120 volts, 121 volts going to the heater. Let's go ahead and ohm out the heater now. And we have nothing. So the heater's been severed somewhere inside there. So we're gonna start pulling this apart. I do have a new heater, door track, hinges, and all that good stuff, so. Because of the ice buildup, you can see that the door's not shutting right, so we'll fix that and uh just to be safe when i'm working in walk-in boxes like this you know put a beanie on hoodie try to stay warm because uh you don't want to freeze your ass off all right first step we're going to uh defrost the door heater and we're going to pick up the water as it drips down so i have someone with a vacuum right now to catch all the moisture that comes down we're just going to do it really quick without burning the side walls Get it defrosted and then we'll pull the track off and go from there. So it's just going to be step by step. We got the threshold up. You can pretty much looks like the heater might be bad in there. But we still got ice all underneath the threshold. So we're going to uh, use the map gas torch. We're going to heat it up. Use the vacuum. Get Because the water instantly freezes because it's negative 10 in this freezer in here. And it's 40 degrees in the walk-in. So, um, But anyways, uh, so we're going to vacuum that up. Get it all you know defrosted and then we'll start pulling the side plates off and all that stuff so set up a battery charging station that way we can have some music while we're working and then we got this is a battery charger this is a battery charger this is a battery charger that way charging up my batteries so all right we got everything underneath the threshold cleaned as much as possible nice and dry no more moisture because of some crappy grout which I still might pull some more of the grout out. We ended up chipping all this out and uh, we're actually gonna get a new threshold to cover over that. That'll come clear to here 
and clear to here and then we can seal that up and not have to grout it we'll just fill it with silicone there's another cool to cool use for the airbag tool is keeping the door centered we're going to change all three hinges we're waiting for a new threshold to be made so we're going to do everything else while we're waiting so yeah i if i had two more i'd put them on the sides but i think it's going to hold it good so that way we can swap out the hinges really quick we got the hinges replaced. Those were easy using those airbags. The door didn't move at all. We just tightened them down. The door closes. The reason why we changed the hinges is because of the stress. I, just from experience, the ice buildup causes stress on the hinges because the employees are always slamming the door shut. So from my experience, if I have a door heater, we're changing hinges too. Um, door gasket. It's like it's all melted down here in the bottom. Maybe the electrical short happened here or something where it melted it. So we're gonna change the door gasket and then we've got a new door sweep for it too. Okay, so I got my threshold. It's just a solid piece of stainless steel and we'll put some grip tape on it, but I'm just kind of marking out where I want my holes. I don't plan on putting any holes in the middle. Um, so we got a, that kind of marked out and then we'll put one hole, maybe a couple holes in the middle to hold this down to the ground and that's it and then we'll fill that with silicone and go ahead and wrap the heater on it we went ahead and drilled some concrete holes with a concrete bit we're going to put anchors down there then secure this guy down so we're completely dried under this first threshold that the heater is going to sit on so we siliconed all underneath there we've got our screw holes we're going to set this down lay the heater then do the heater all the way around and then do the threat you know the final stainless threshold after it is not the prettiest thing but it's going all the way down to the bottom. Looks like we had a little extra, so we had to kind of spool it up right here. And then now uh, we're gonna put the threshold down. Put a little, a couple dabs of silicone. Um, yeah, it's coming through here. We'll connect into all that, so should be good. All right, it's just, I hate doing door heaters, but whatever. Um, the track is always a pain, so you have to notch out the bottom corner so that way it doesn't pinch the heater off. But we got it all in. We went with the factory heater track so it does make the perfect corners up in here. There you go, now you can actually see it. So it's all in. It's a pain in the butt, but it's like polishing a turd. See man, that bottom heater though, whoo, it's close. But I notched it so we should be good. Now we're gonna get ready to lay the threshold down and we're gonna fill that with silicone like crazy. We are getting ready to lay the threshold down and notice I put silicone everywhere so this creates a watertight seal and hopes to keep the water out of here. So that way when I set the threshold down it should, it should smush that stuff out. It won't be perfectly pretty in the corners but it is what it is. Um, this silicone isn't very clear, it's more of a white, you know, whatever color but anyways. It's all good, we're gonna set this guy down and then uh, put some grip tape on the threshold too. So. All right, it's not gonna get too much better than that. It's not perfect, nor will it ever be. Uh, there is silicone under here, so I'm not gonna worry about it. There's, there's a little bit of a lip, but they'll just have to deal with it. You know, the grip tape, it ain't gonna last forever, but at least it does something for now. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, hook this guy up, start up the heater, hopefully pray across our fingers it's not cut. All right. Now we have a working door heater, 0.74 amps, 115 volts going through it. We're gonna get that push back in there. We've got a new threshold with the grip tape on it. It is what it is, it's not gonna be perfect. Um, we put a new heater track cover. We put new hinges, new door closure, and new door gasket. So this should last a while. All right, and this is what the door heater should look like when it's finished. So if we look inside the box, you're seeing some warm stuff because that's all my 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 crap but basically looking at the door heater is nice and warm now all the way around well we had a door heater that failed on a walk-in freezer um walk-in freezer door heaters are never my favorite thing to do because they are so time consuming that took me seven hours i think because there's so many steps you have to follow. And if you don't follow those steps, they, it, you know, the heater fails really quick. So the biggest thing I can stress to everybody is to lift up the threshold and get all the moisture that you can out of the threshold. If you don't, what'll happen is it will refreeze and lift up the threshold and sever the heater again. Okay. That's the biggest 
piece of advice when it comes to doing walk-in door heaters is to make sure that you get everything out, every bit of ice from underneath the threshold. And you saw that I actually had to pull up the threshold even more and get to the secondary one and pull out all the crappy grout that you know the tile guys had done. That, that happens a lot with walk-in freezer doors is people tile over them, all kinds of weird things. But so once I got all that moisture out of there, I dried it up really well, heated it up with the torch, kept pulling the moisture out of the concrete, got it all dried up. Be careful too, I made a big mistake one time. Heating up the concrete, the concrete will pop. I learned that one really quick too. That thing popped right into my eyeball. And I closed my eyelid. This wasn't this time, but it happened another time. The concrete popped where I was heating it up and the concrete exploded kind of and little shrapnel went everywhere. And I closed my eye and I had a scar on my eyelid right here. It was such a trip. I was so lucky that I didn't hit my eyeball. But anyways, yeah, be very careful when you're heating up concrete. So um, I use the map gas torch a lot when I'm working on these walk-in freezer doors. You got to be very careful because you can really quickly melt the plastic around the door frame. You can melt door gaskets and all that stuff, okay? So we got all that moisture out. Once we did that, we created a watertight barrier by using the silicone. We used, um, uh, it's a the silicone that can handle the low temperatures and then also uh, it can handle moisture. Even though it's not supposed to be put in water, it's made for you know low temperature and moisture laden environments basically, okay? So we used the silicone and filled all the, the empty space underneath the first threshold. And then we set down, well, before we set down the other threshold, we put silicone underneath the outsides of it. So that way the silicone smushed out and then we just overfilled everything. So that way the water has to go through almost two barriers of silicone to make sure, you know, because what happens is um, people don't realize it. Uh, this can also happen with uh, walk-in freezer evaporators. When you defrost a walk-in freezer and water gets on the floor, that water has to go somewhere. If it doesn't refreeze instantly, then it'll get underneath the tile and start lifting up tiles and or lifting up raised floors and different things like that. So that's why it's so imperative when you're working in walk-in freezers that you don't get any water on the floor. Same thing though, they have a walk-in cooler and they'll clean the floors with buckets of water. Well, when they splash on that threshold, it'll get underneath the threshold, freeze, and then lift it up and sever the heater so anyways went off on a tangent there but um, showed some images with a thermal imaging camera I've been finding a lot more cool uses to use with the thermal imaging camera there'll be a link in the show notes uh, for all the different tools that I used and mentioned in the show notes of this video um, yeah really not much more going on there you know I I don't like to make them super long and show everything so I just kind of show the key points Obviously, I don't want these to be used for DIY kind of a stuff, you know, so I want to make sure that I leave out a lot of the key features that I realize that most of you service techs should understand or already know. Um, feel free to reach out to me if you guys have any more questions. Uh, you know, this probably won't be the most popular video out there, but I like to make um, functional videos and not be so worried about the most popular amazing thing because walk-in freezer door heaters were always a pain in the butt for me. So I really like to show like my methods because they they, they seem to work really well, okay? Um, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. Do me a favor, consider subscribing to my new YouTube channel. I haven't posted any videos yet, but it's called HVACR Tools. There's gonna be a link in the show notes of this video. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it guys. Uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Okay.